are live. What's up, everybody? How are you doing? How are you doing? And welcome to the Chapman Show. Today we have a very, very, very special guest. Give it up for Brian Maxwell. What's up, Brian? How you doing, brother? Pretty good. How about yourself? Ah, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, when was the last time you had a fight? I, I, I talked to your opponent. I don't know if that was like your last fight. You're um, a bare knuckles FC fighter. So, um, was that actually your last fight that, that you had? Yes, it was three weeks ago, November 19th. Oh, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's recent. Okay, so um, out of curiosity, how many times have you um, fought for a bare knuckle, knuckle championship? It was my debut. Oh, okay. Okay. So so what was it like actually fighting bare knuckle? Because you said that's your, 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 um, your first official one. Did you grow up on the streets? Did you, um, is that like your, your first one, period? Or, or were you like, did you kind of grow up just doing sports and it's just something that you wanted to try out? I mean, you know, I didn't grow up in the streets at all. I mean, I grew up in the country and, you know, I kind of grew up on the farm and it's that and the third, but, you know, I, I feel like combat sports in general, it is what I was here to do. I wrestled most of my life and I wrestled in middle school, high school, and on the college level. And, oh. you know, I tell the story all the time that, you know, I didn't know nothing about mixed martial arts until I just happened to be in my dorm room kicking it one day flipping through the channels and you know flip the channel and UFC fights happen to be on and Anderson Silva happened to be fighting and from that point on I was I was stuck. Anderson is a dog man he I, I love him as a fighter he's such a good fighter so where did you grow up at I mean uh, you said you grew up in a country like what state what city where are you from? I grew up in Franklin County Virginia aka the moonshine capital of the world as they call it but you know i grew up in a it's a whole county but i grew up in in a town called rocky mount virginia so you know that's where i grew up at and you know had some, had some good times and some bad times just like any other person i understand that now do you actually still live in virginia or did you you move elsewhere no i still, I still live in virginia oh okay same place no i, I moved to to run up virginia it's about 30 minutes away so i've been running up virginia now so yeah, that's what I call home now. Okay, okay. So your base, you said you grew up wrestling. Is that the only martial art discipline that you grew up doing? I, I did karate for a couple of years, but I, I didn't like it. So, you know, I told my mom I didn't want to do it no more. And she was like, fuck it. You don't have to go back. <laughs> what did you like about it? Uh, it, it? It wasn't me as a kid. I, you know, it just wasn't my thing. Okay, so out of curiosity, what did you like about wrestling that you actually didn't like about karate? I mean, what 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 made you want to keep on wrestling? Because you said you wrestled all through middle school, all through high school, all on the, on the college level. So what was it about wrestling that that actually intrigued you and made you want to stay in it? Uh, I mean, my father my father was a wrestler. He was a high school wrestler, and you know he he he's pretty pretty decent, but I I feel like I could beat him. <laughs> back in the time. but what made me stick with wrestling I, I grew up watching it all the time and I was always around it even though my parents made me play basketball I, I, I hated that shit but you know what, what was more fun about wrestling to me is because of the, how physical it was and you know it's just a whole bruteness and being able to do you you feel what I'm saying be there one on one with someone I definitely understand that. That's so crazy. You said that your parents made you play basketball. It's so crazy. My mom would not let me play no sport. She wouldn't let me play football. She wanted me and me to be choir. I ended up being a fighter. Ain't that crazy? It's like I knew, right? Yes, yes, yes. So um what what college you said that you um went all the way to college for wrestling. Did you did you go on a scholarship or did you just yes, go to scholarship? I went to West Virginia Tech, go Golden Bears. <laughs> Ah, that's what's up. So, uh, what was your major? Did you actually finish college, or you just, or you just go for a little bit? I just, I just went for a little bit. You know, I, you know, life happened, and you know, I got burnt out. I got tired of wrestling. It was my my burnout point, and you know, that the atmosphere just wasn't me anymore. It was just, 
And plus, you know, I'm so used to, uh, how can I put this? In high, middle school and high school, you know, everybody that was my teammate, I grew. I went from the time I started until, you know, the time high school started with the same people. So that was like my family. So, so wrestling to me was like a family-based sport. Everybody, you know, had each other's back. And, you know, when I went to college, you know, I, I didn't necessarily expect that to be the, the case because, you know, everybody was going to be from somewhere different. But, you know, my first my first couple of years there, you know, everybody was always together as the you know, same. And as time went by, you know, a couple guys dropped out, a couple guys left, a couple guys didn't want to wrestle anymore. So it's just, you know, I didn't see a new people. I just didn't, you know, I, I didn't feel, feel that same brotherhood and, I was at my point in wrestling where I didn't want to wrestle anymore too much because I, I realized, you know, after college, wrestling, what is there to do? You feel what I'm saying? I understand. I understand. A lot of people have, have problems with that. A lot of wrestlers, because after you threw with college, you know what I mean? Wrestling isn't like a really big sport like that. It don't pay the bills. It's not like the NBA or NFL or something like that. Usually, it's some type of fight organization that, that you have to go into to actually make it as a wrestler. So you said that you. I'm oh, sorry. I mean, there there is wrestling after college, but you got to damn near be a, a Olympian to to actually make money from it and be able to pay the bills. And you know, me foreseeing the future, I didn't. I, I wanted to do that, but I, I had to get real with myself. You feel what I'm saying? I understand that. So so I take it you ain't at the like the the Jordan Burroughs type of level, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I wish I, w- I would have been back then, but you know, life happens. So um, speaking of that, like a Ben Askren, you know, that's a good example. Now, was he able to make any money off wrestling? Do you know? I have no idea because you said that there is wrestling after high school. Ben Askren, he was an extremely de- de- um, you know, dedicated wrestler. So somebody like that at that level, was he making money? You think before he actually went to MMA? Just for an example. I'm sure he was, but, you know, a couple months back, I seen him and Jordan Burroughs finally wrestle, which was like the match of all matches that everybody wanted to see, and Jordan Burroughs beat the dust off of him. Yes, yes he did. That double leg ain't no joke. For sure ain't. Man, that dude is a beast. I mean, I watch any formal combat, period. Like, I watch everything. I like watch wrestling, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, any type of fight, so... That's what that's how I even know about Jordan. Yeah, I watched that match and, and Ben Ben is a dog, man. He's actually he's had a little rough lately, but you know, it is what it is. Now I don't care. Ben, I'm sorry. Ben is pretty good. He's a he's a beast, but Jordan, Jordan Burroughs is just a, a whole other animal. Yeah, it's it's levels to things. It's levels yeah. to things and that, that dude he's just on a completely different level. I feel like he's the best wrestler on the planet Earth, no doubt about it. I mean, a lot of the Russians are good, but he, he's on another level. Thanks. Yeah, so, so out of curiosity, how did you actually um, get get even involved with um, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, especially because it sounds like you didn't grow up in the street, and it sounds like you had a wrestling background. So how did you go from wrestling, how did you go to, from that transition from, to wrestling to actually boxing? Well, when the transition for me was that, you know, I always wanted to do it after I started watching UFC fights and I just happened to be scrolling through the internet one day and you know there was a bigger thing called Rutgers in the Cage real popular back in this area back then and you know I, I see that they had fight coming up so I, me being me I was like you know, I finally want to do this so I signed up for it and you know I wasn't expecting a call a phone call back but the promoter called me back within within 24 hours and Gave me a, a two and zero opponent. I didn't know nothing about the sport too much then, and so I accepted the fight because I was like, "Fuck it, I'm, I'm all in. I'm gonna do it." Right. And you, so, you know, I had a pretty, pretty decent amateur career. Won seven, seven, seven Amy titles in three weight classes, and you know, I turned pro three years ago, and I, I'm having a pretty decent pro career so far. But you know, what got me interested in bare knuckle boxing was one of my one of the guys that I trained with, Bruce and Bramsky, uh, got a, an offer to fight Kim McGrove on BKFC2. And, you know, he, 
would I would I corner him? So I, that itself was a blessing to 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 help go corner a teammate on the big stage, and you know it, it was awesome. Loved it. It was a great atmosphere. I was skeptical about it at first, and, and it was like right there in the face and watching him fight, and you know. And plus all the cameras and stuff around. A lot of people thought I was there to fight that at BKFC too. But you know, I had fought one of my biggest MMA fights a couple of weeks prior to that, so I definitely wasn't there for that. I was there for my teammates. So you know, I definitely don't like to. I'm not that guy to try to steal somebody's shot. I'm gonna go and get it on myself. I'm gonna go get her. So I'm gonna go get it by myself and instead of with someone else. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I got. I got offered a fight then, but I didn't feel like it was, you know, my, my time yet. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, a little bit of time went by and we had tryouts in Philly and that was just a whole blessing in itself too. And that was my opportunity. So I went and, went and handled business and, you know, I got the call and they told me what I needed to do to, to sign. And, you know, I needed another win on my record. So I went and got it. And then the rest is history. They they surprised. I got surprised right after my fight. After I had went and clinked up in the locker room, and was getting ready to corner some teammates, and he called me, called me out, and you know offered me offered me a fight, and I accepted right on the spot. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now I have to ask because I know who Kendall Grove is. Kendall Grove, he's definitely a pioneer of the sport. How did your teammate do in that bare knuckle fight against Kendall Grove? I, I, I'm just curious. How did that fight even go? Hey, that, it, it was a decent fight. They went all five rounds. They both had their moments, and you know, Kendall got the win. But it was a it was a good fight for my teammate, you know, because you know, as expected, Kendall's a big name, and my teammate, you know, not wasn't not so a, a name. So you already know that you know Kendall was expecting to run through my teammate, but it didn't happen. And it went, you know, all five rounds and put people on the scene. So it was awesome. So out of curiosity. Um... Like, I'm still new to the sport, you know. Um, I've only watched a couple fights at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Now, are all the um, rounds five? I mean, all the rounds, is it always five rounds? Or how many rounds is it usually? It's all five two-minute rounds, but they're, they're about to switch the flag up a little bit and change championship fights to seven two-minute rounds. Savage, savage. That is crazy. That is crazy. I kind of figured that it was going to go that way because... I mean, if you have having a championship belt, you know, it has to go a little bit longer, you know. Yeah. So, so um, how many pro MMA, how many pro MMA fights have you had? Cuz you said you did like pretty you said you did very well as an amateur. I had 5 belts in 3 different weight classes. You had 7 belts in 3 different weight classes. That's that's a that's a resume. So, do you have a, a lot of pro uh, pro MMA fights or you just got a few or uh, or are you I got five MMA fights and I got two pro Muay Thai fights. Oh wow! And then my one fight. So I, I'm still early in the game. I'm three years in, and you know, 2018 was probably the most I fought four times that year. So that was the most I I fought in a while. Yeah, you look. You still look pretty young. So so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna jump sports? Or are you gonna go back and forth? Are you gonna stay with bare knuckle? Are you gonna do Muay Thai? Are you gonna do um, MMA? Like, what's your, what's your future looking like? I mean, my future, you know, like I said before, like I said on a podcast before, I'm, you know, I'm making, trying to make bare knuckle boxing my, my home, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm still gonna do MMA if, you know, if they allow me to do it, if Muay Thai, if they allow you to do it, but you know, I'm looking to make bare knuckle boxing my, my home. That makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now, um, I always ask people because, of course, I had uh, Fred on on the podcast, and I'm pretty sure you've seen the, the podcast. I don't know if you did or not. Really nice yeah, dude. Seen. Really, really respectable. So, can you walk me through your fight with Fred? I'm very curious. In your mind, like take take me. I I, I want you to. I want to see the mind. See the fight through your mind. Like, like, can you give me a, um, like a, a download of how the fight went? Because uh, I, 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 I asked him, and he kind of told me his point of view. So I'm very curious to hear your point of view of how the fight went down. I mean, you know, the, you know, my, my, my best part of the fight, you no, know, I, I dropped, I dropped a guy that never had been dropped before, and that was the first for him, and that that was exciting. I mean, I wish I would have uh, executed more and. 
did what my my game plan was, but you know, sometimes, you know, bare knuckle boxing is a is a, a 50 50 sport. Anything can happen at any point in time. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, I still felt like, you know, even though after the fight, I drowned in my sorrows for a few moments and and had my moment. I still feel like, you know, I, I came out and did a few things that I wanted to do. But the rest of the things, I, I, I see my mistakes and know what I have to get better at doing to, to prepare for the next one so I can get this win. I feel you. Now, you said that you, you had a specific thing, game plan. You said it didn't necessarily go how you wanted to. What was your actual game plan when you went into the fight with Fred? Oh, I didn't, I didn't fight Fred. I didn't fight Fred. I fought a guy named Jared Warren, oh. hometown guy. Oh. But, but man, me and Fred, me and Fred hung out a little bit at the fights, and you know I got to know him a little bit, and you know we, we communicate a little bit now after the fights. But Fred's a cool dude. Oh, he's the, another country guy just like I am. This whole time, I actually thought that you fought Fred. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, so who did you who did you actually fight then? I fought a guy named Jared Warren. He was a hometown Tampa guy. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so did it go all five rounds? Did it go three rounds? I mean, like, like how did the fight actually play out? I have no idea. See, I thought that you fought Fred this whole time. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it ended in the first round. You know, first round, you know, we, we, we traded back and forth. And, you know, I dropped him first, and he got back up. And then he hit me, and I fell, and I got right back up. And we went a little bit more. And then towards the end of the round, he hit me, and... You know, cut my eye all up, and I was on the ground for a second, so they called the fight. So you know, that's how it went. <laughs> oh, man. Now, um, do they have an eight count or a ten count in, in bare knuckle fighting championship? It's lagging. Yeah. It's, it, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brian. Okay, you back? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. So, um, is it an eight count or a ten count? Because I heard, like, like, um, when I was actually interviewing Fred, he said something about an eight count. So, is it eight or ten in bare knuckle? I mean, it's eight, but they still count to ten to to give you the moment, the, the few seconds to make sure you're good and ready to keep going. But oh. if you're not, they they go ahead and call it off and wave it off. Now, yeah. now, how did it feel when you actually dropped him and like in in that fight? Was it just Cause I know when I when I've been in fights and I'm in a big arena and I, there have been times where I've dropped people and it's it's just so surreal. Sometimes you don't even know you dropped them, you hit them, and you just don't see them for a second. Did you have that type of adrenaline um dump or how was it or did you did you feel calm? A lot of times when I fight, it feels like it's a dream. It feels like it feels like it's a dream, and then when it's over, you like man that that just really happened. Was it that type of out of body experience for you two or no? I mean, for, for me, it was, you know, when I hit him and dropped him, I wanted to hit him a couple more times because he, he got up fast and, you know, the ref jumped him away, so I, I had to hold back. And I was like, it didn't necessarily kill my vibe, but it, it, it stopped me from doing what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? I know, because you're used to, the, you, used to the MMA stuff. I know yeah. I know when you, you see somebody drop an MMA, your first reflex, and especially as a wrestler or MMA champion, is a, to get ready to go to the ground, but... You know, boxing, you got to kind of just wait. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so how did you well, kick? That was definitely my first experience with that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it happened because it's, it's, it's all in all, it's a, a learning experience either way, regardless whether I lost or if I won. Every second is a learning experience. Now, I agree. Now, have you ever gotten, because you said you, um, you didn't really grow up in the street. You said you grew up in the country. So before this, have you have you ever gotten a bare knuckle fight or ever gotten a street fight or anything, or was that your first experience? Period with a bare knuckle fight whatsoever. You know, I got into. I was a normal kid. I got into fights and stuff, but not something that was controlled. You feel what I'm saying? Then I would, you know, since I had wrestling experience, I'd go ahead and pick a kid. So if I got into a fight, I would pick somebody down and try to beat the hell out of them until somebody pulled me off, but. You know, I really rarely got into street fights or anything like that because, you know, I I didn't try to carry myself that way, but, you know, if it happened, it happened. 
That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Now, on the horizon, because you said you fought three weeks ago, so um, have they actually hit you up about any more fights? Do you think that you're going to oh, yeah. take anything anytime yeah, I, soon? I have a, a multi-fight deal, and, you know, like, like I told them, you know, like I said, I had my, my few moments of down in myself when I went to the locker room, but, you know, I, I swallowed it. I ate it. It's over now, and, you know, they we're, we're in talks right now, and, you know, 2020, February, or March, it's, it's on again. Okay, okay. Fred says something about February as well. So y'all probably going to yeah. end up fighting on the same card again, again most likely? Mm -hmm. More than likely. Now, what weight class do you fight at? For, um... Well, I, I, I usually fight at 185, but I fought as a catch rate of 195 for, for my debut. But, you know, this time around, I'm cutting... I'm cutting to where I'm comfortable at, where my home is, 185. It's where I fight best at, and it's where I'm best in shape at, and look look better at 185, and that's where I'm going to be at. And hopefully, keep all my fights at 185. But you know, for for the right person, I will drop to 175. Woo. Woo. Okay, so the weight classes, it sounds, are are they different? In, in bare knuckle the fighting championship or they are they the same the weight, weight class as UFC? The weight classes go by fives in bare knuckle boxing. So oh. they go by fives. Okay. So like 185, 195, 205, and so on. Wow, so so it's just a whole bunch of weight classes then. I don't think it's a bunch of weight classes, but I do think it's a whole bunch of weight classes. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. See, since, it's steel, since it's fairly new still, you know, all the weight classes haven't necessarily been, I guess, figured out because, you know, there's a stable of fighters. There's a good stable of fighters, but since it's still growing and expanding, you know, the future, the future is super bright and I, I can't wait for it. And, you know, it's, it's super popular right now and we'll see what all weight classes behold with who holds titles and this, that, and the third. Now, what what's your overall goal um, as a fighter? Uh, do do you? I mean, do you want to just um, be a champion in bare knuckle FC? Do you want to go to the UFC? Uh, do you do you want to like? I mean, because most bare knuckle, a lot of the bare knuckle guys came from the UFC. You know that that's why they 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 seen them in the first place. Uh, like, what's your overall goals as a fighter? Do you want to be a champion, or are you more of a? Um, or of a purse fighter, a lot, a lot of fighters, they just want to get that money and get out of there. Like, what's your whole, what's your whole goal overall as a um, martial artist? My, my thing is, I, I'll never be a purse fighter. Bump that out. I wasn't put here for that. I mean, the, the money is good and all, but if you're just fighting for the money, why do it? You feel what I'm saying? You got to love what you're doing to be able to enjoy that money and if, you're, if your goal, in my opinion, is not to be the champion, be the best, why do it? I feel that. I definitely at feel that. The day, at the end of the day, yes, the, the money is there, but if that's all you're fighting for, why do it? You feel what I'm saying? What are you going to do when when that money's not coming in anymore? You feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you don't want to be a champion and have that much love mm -hmm. for the sport, bare knuckle or mixed martial arts, or you know Muay Thai and stuff like that. Why do it? That makes that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay, well, now um, definitely to be the champion at some point. That makes sense. So your Muay, did your Muay Thai background that you have? Because you said you have a couple Muay Thai fights. Did that help you translate to the bare knuckle boxing? Because I mean, how how did it help you, or was it, or did it not really do do much for you? I I mean, in your opinion. I mean, all in all, it, it helped a lot from still, you know, because in Muay Thai, you still, you're still boxing, you feel what I'm saying? And, but with, you get to use your, your legs and take, kick the shit out of people. But, you know, the transition is, is nice. I'm still learning because, you know, at first, you know, I, I'm not the guy to like boxing too much, but I respect it. But now I'm growing to love boxing. So all over again, because I liked it as a kid, but then... You know, big Mike Tyson fan. I love Mike Tyson. And, you know, of course, everybody loves Ali. I love Ali, too. And Roy Jones Jr., those are my top three favorite oh. boxers of all time, period. Yes. But, you know, I, I kind of got out of boxing and I st stopped 
stop liking boxing, but I respected it because in MMA, you still need boxing and good hands, but MMA hands and boxing hands are two different hands. And, you know, transitioning, the transition over to bare knuckle boxing is, I mean, it's not too hard, but it, it, it's different. It's all a learning experience at the end of the day. Now, you said that, that there are two different type of hands because you have MMA hands and you have boxing hands, which I agree because I've done both. MMA and boxing, MMA boxing and boxing boxing are very different. Now, how different do you think that bare knuckle boxing is compared to normal boxing? And how do you think, because you just named, you know, Roy Jones, Ali, and uh, Mike Tyson. How do you think people like that would have did in bare knuckle boxing if they would have fought? Those guys would have did fucking awesome, in my opinion, because Mike Tyson, he's got big, heavy-ass hands. Roy Jones Jr. is is fast, slick, and cuts excellent angles, and would definitely put his hands on someone. He, he'd definitely be a bare knuckle fighting championship champion. And, you know, Muhammad Ali in his prime, you know, best heavyweight champion of all time, he, he would definitely be a bare knuckle fighting championships champion. For sure. That makes sense. Uh, how much of a difference do you think that it, it is between the bare knuckle hands and the boxing hands? Because I fought bare knuckle um, in like little underground street fighting clubs when I was younger, be, before MMA was even popular. Like, I mean, I'm older, so I mean, talking about like 2000, you know, you were probably still little then, you know. But um, it's different because when you hit people, you hit hit that bone to bone. It's different. Like, I remember one one time I hit this dude and his cheek so hard, his tooth went through his cheek and it cut my knuckle open. I couldn't close yeah. my hand for a month after that fight. Now, do you have those, did, did you have that same problem um, damaging your knuckles during a fight or were your knuckles fine after the fight? Like, how, how did you feel? I mean, my knuckles, my knuckles were fine. I, I expected that when I, you know, whenever I hit him, that it would it would hurt or it would sting. I, I I felt nothing when it came to hitting him and stuff, and that's what I liked. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, were you trying to go to the to the body, or are you just trying to take his head off? I mean, how is it when you actually in there? Do you just feel like you feel like you just like a caged animal, or you feel like you you, you want to get a little bit technical? Because I know you've been in there a lot. If you have seven belts in three different weight classes, you know you are no stranger to the cage, the ring. You know. Like, was it, did you feel a little bit more savage in there, bare knuckle, or did it just feel like any other fight? I mean, you know, at first, you know, you know, the, the calm before the storm, it's always what you're going to get before a fight. You know, I feel pretty good about it, and, you know, it, it's like I am for every fight. I make that walk, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to get this dub, you know, get out, celebrate with my friends and family, and it's a wrap. But, you know, it, it didn't really feel no different. I, I went in there with the same attitude I have with with every fight since day one to, you know, go in, destroy, get this dub, and get out. But sometimes it doesn't go that way, you feel what I'm saying? I completely understand. Now, you fought on a really big card if you fought a few weeks ago. So after the yeah. fight, did you just go, did you go relax? Did you go hang with your people? Did you watch the fights? What did you do? Because you said you were drowning your sorrows for a second. So how, what did you do after the fight? Like, I mean, I, after my fight, you know, I, I had to talk to the doctors for a few moments to clear protocol and talk to them and sign some stuff. But, you know, after that, you know, I went to the locker room. Like I said, I drowned in my sorrows for a few moments. And then, you know, I, I, I picked myself up, two tears in a bucket, fuck it. You know, better luck next time. And we know what we need to fix and know what we need to do to, to get this dub next time. But, you know, I, after that, you know, I did what all fighters do. I went and got me a beer and watched the rest of the fight. That's what's up. That's what's up. So is there anything that you think that you will do next time um, that you think, or what was an experience that you think that will help you in your next fight? Just out of curiosity. I mean, without giving away too much. I mean, being, more, being myself, being controlling myself and being more technical. You know, that's, that's one thing about me. I, I, when standing, I'm, I'm kind of a loose cannon a little bit, but I know I need to, with bare knuckle, I don't need to be a, a loose cannon and be belligerent. I need to be technical and aggressive. You feel what I'm saying? That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. 
Okay, it's our. It's... There will be a big change my next flight. I personally guarantee it. Good. I cannot wait. I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. I mean, I'm getting more podcasts with Bare Knuckle Guys, so I'm definitely going to start coming to the events, probably doing some photography, probably doing more interviews. You already know. So so out of curiosity, is there any, because we we about at that 30-minute mark almost, so is there any sponsors, anybody that you want to thank, any shout-outs that you want to give on this podcast? Definitely want to shout-out Rev Gear. Uh, I wish I had my list in front of me. My manager been telling me to write my list down, and I have it. Definitely big shout out to Rev Gear, MMA Uncensored, uh, Queen Anne's Revenge, uh, uh, Hemp Kings out in Colorado, California, uh, Elite Warrior Challenge, the Hockey House. Uh, shout out to Round 30 Mixed Martial Arts, Modern Glade Mixed, Mixed Martial Arts, Hybrid Mixed Martial Arts, uh, Powerhouse Boxing Gym. Uh, there's, there's still a whole lot more on the list. I, I, I need to start writing this stuff down so I, I know who to call out because, you know, I'm getting new sponsors at least once a week now. And I got some, some surprise sponsors about to come up and, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's wonderful right now. It's a, it's a true blessing. I'm, I'm happy to be here where I'm at. I'm three years into my professional career and not many people get chances of being, getting to the big stage this early in their career. So I definitely feel blessed about the sponsors and, the, the new fans that I've got just off this one fight and, and everything. I'm just blessed that, you know, my family and friends and teammates are still behind me. And, you know, even though I've been an asshole and stuff like that, you know, everybody's worked with me and stayed, stayed calm through my storm. <laughs> well, good. Well, good. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. It's about that time to um, cut the podcast short. I appreciate you. And, hey, whenever you get an announcement, Got to come back on the show, man. I would love to have you again. Definitely love to have you so we can break that news. Yeah, you. You'll be the first to know. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, brother, and we'll talk soon. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, everyone. That was Brian Maxwell. Once again, Brian Maxwell. I cannot wait to see him fight live. So, so excited. Young guy. He has a lot ahead of him in his career, especially for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And as always, I appreciate you watching the show. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to The Chapman Show. And we will be giving away some, some art pieces very soon. And also, we have art for sale at thechapmanart.com. Once again, thechapmanart.com. Thank you for watching again. I appreciate you very much. And if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And until next time.